Hey everyone, Pete here. In this episode we're going to go and walk through how I go about engraving this oak slab. Stay tuned. So it was my friend's wedding recently and I thought it would be a good thing to um, celebrate the occasion and engrave his initials and the time and date on this slab of oak we've got. So I thought I'd go through a bit of a run through of how I'll go about doing that. So to start off, I will take a photo from a bird's eye view um, with my phone, with a ruler in there so I can dimension that up in Fusion 360. Um, that way I can kind of get an outline of what it is, uh, where the text is gonna go uh, and the facing operation. Because this is round, I don't wanna be wasting time facing around the edge when I don't need to. Uh, once I've got that done, I can add some features in, like his initials, a little symbol for the rings. Uh, and the date and then it's just into the uh, machining tab and um, generate the stock add the features we want to uh, engrave and get it all exported using the Gerbil post processor to the root 4 um, I'm going to use two bits um, just a 6mm, two flute, straight to end mill uh, nothing fancy I could put a bigger bit in but I think it's already in the machine so we will use that one and then I'm going to use a 60 degree V bit uh, to do the engraving. Uh, you really do need to face these before um, going any further because it's not completely flat. This piece, if you don't face it, um, the text looks weird when you um, engrave it. Some bits will be fat, some bits will be uh, skinny, and it's not what you want. So stick around, we're going to just do a quick montage of the CNC process. Hope you like it, and I'll show you the results at the end. So before we start machining, we need to get this workpiece clamped down, and the way I've done that here is just two pieces of wood and these uh, little clam clamps that you can find on the Root CNC store. I find these particularly handy because you can put them in your grid, twist them around and it applies enough force to keep this rock solid. Uh, so that's how I'm going to hold it. You might notice that I've got a little mark in the middle. So what this is is going to be the 0, zero in X and Y that matches up on the uh, Fusion 360 CAM model. Um, so when I bring the machine, the spindle over, I'm going to set it on top and set that to be zero, 0. I am going to use a touch-off probe to set the height from the workpiece, and then it should just be press go. It will turn the uh, over there the fume extractor on, not fume extractor, the dust extraction on. So it will suck all the bits up, and it will start the spindle to the correct spindle speed. I've got the um, I'm running the root controller to control this machine. Uh, it's the older Rev2, but if you were interested in the electronics for this check the video description so you can see what controller I'm using to control this machine right let's crack on right and that's that home let's get the dust extractor ready donk load the facing up we'll see how well this goes I might have to do a couple of passes So what I've done here is the, um, I've only decided to face one millimetre off but given how undulating this piece, this front face is, I'm going to just move it down a little bit uh, just so I take a slightly healthier cut. At the moment I'm really far off. So I'm not going to modify the G-code, all I'm going to do is just bring the spindle up, set it to zero again so it will go, or try and go again. So I don't know how well this is on the microphone, but you can see I'm not quite taking a full surface off. So I am going to let this one run. Yeah, you can see it here. I've got a low point here, so I'm going to let this do, let this pass finish, and then I'll take it down one more go and do a second pass. I don't want to go too deep to begin with, it's quite hard wood, so we'll just see how well we go. Right, that's finished. Uh, as you can see, it hasn't quite um, faced the whole board. Um, this was actually a bit further out than I'd thought, to be honest. 
so this left edge needs to be taken, uh, well the whole thing needs to be taken down a little bit just so we can catch this left edge. So let's see what we can do. That's the lowest bit there, actually, looking across the board. So what's that then? Two and a bit mil. We need to take off, just get that bomb left edge down. I don't know if that'll come out on camera, but yeah, just over two mil we need to take off. So let's move the CNC machine into a slightly better place. Uh, again, I'm not going to change the G code here, I am just going to uh, change the uh, Z0 height. So, the easiest way I found to do this, I'll take this off so you can see, drop that down uh, to zero, Z0. So we know we're going to cut one mil below that. So if I take it down um, and one more millimeter, uh, so we need to do G zero Z minus one, and now set that to be the new zero. We're going to go down uh, one millimeter from there. So set that to zero. I think that's right. Sounds about right. Let's give it a try and see where we end up. For all you smart people at home, I was only taking one mil off, so I need to take another, I need to take a one more millimeter off the zero height. I knew it didn't sound right when I was saying it, but we will start again. That's the beauty with this. We can just keep going. Right, now that's done, you can see my spindle isn't particularly trammed very well. That's not a problem. The, uh, the actual 3D printed mounts wearing on this one. It's been on there a couple of years now. But uh, yeah, now this is faced. I didn't quite get the full left edge, but that's not a problem. I'm not worried about that. A bit of light sanding will just make it look nice. Um, so with that now surfaced, we're gonna go ahead and swap out to this V-bit. This is a 60 degree um, V-bit. I've used this for a while now. I'm going to go very light, do shallow passes on this, just because I don't know how well this bit is going to work in that material, and I quite like it. I don't want to damage this bit. So I'm going to take some very uh, gentle passes and engrave the top. So I'm going to leave the uh, disc extractor off now. I don't think this will make too much of a mess, so you can see the majestic moves when you do engraving. It's quite good fun. Right, I think I'm going to have to move you out of the way a little bit. Let's try that then, let's see how that goes. Right, I don't know if that's coming out on camera. Oh, let's get the feet right. Um, it looks really good in person. I think I want to do a second pass um, on the rings just to make them a little bit cl more clear. But all in all, I think once we get a bit of um, wax and uh, stain on there, I think they'll pop quite nicely. The only thing I'm not particularly keen on, it seems to be, from my perspective, shifted to the left. I could have done a bit better at referencing the machine. Um, 
live and learn. I'm kind of stuck where we are now. But, right, I'm going to go back to the computer, have another crack at updating the G-code for the um, rings, and we'll give it a go. So I'm much happier with the way that's turned out now. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, knock the surface back with some sandpaper, clean up the edges with um, an orbital sander, and then get a bit of varnish on. You don't want to see me do that, so I'll jump back when it's all done and you can see the finished article. So here's the finished article. What I've done is added a bit of Osmo oil to the top and bottom and added a um, hanging mechanism to hang it on the wall. And you can see it's come out quite nicely. I'm quite happy with the engraving. I quite enjoy the uh, two rings next to one another in the day. And I flip it over and I've got a nice little hanging method on the bottom. So yeah, here's a quick video of just engraving a piece of oak. Um, just as a bit of a memorable piece for the day. Um, and I hope they like it. So um, if you like this video, stay tuned for more. I've got something coming in the pipeline to show off the laser capabilities of the Route 4 Lite and the little laser module. So please like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to see anything more or have any other ideas of videos you want to see from me, please let me know. Um, so stay tuned for the next one and I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.